Hello everyone, my name is Xi Xu, a PhD candidate from Xi'an Jiaotong University, China. Today I'm honored to be here to make a presentation about our work. The title is Interpretation Enabled, Software Reuse Detection Based on a Multi-Level Birthmark Model. This is the outline of my presentation. Along with the growing popularity of open source software, software reuse becomes a common phenomenon. However, extensive reuse of existing codes leads to some license violation issues. What's more, malware and software vulnerability issues could be raised due to careless software reuse. The goal of software reuse detection is to determine whether a candidate program contains similar codes already used in a target program. Since the source code of a candidate program is typically unavailable in reality, many binary code reuse detection approaches have been proposed. However, these approaches suffer from three limitations. The first is poor interpretability. The detection results of these approaches lack of the ability to provide detailed evidence to support reuse detection results because they usually only report their results in form of similarity scores range, ranging from 0 to 1. It has no way to show where similarity happens and how and why similar. Then even with the same source code, different compilations will naturally produce different structures and syntax in its binary codes. Most approaches that rely on structural and syntax information fail to deal with the differences caused by variations in compilation. Finally, it's time consuming to measure the similarities of all function pairs between a target program and a candidate program. In other words, it's neither effective in case that a reused part only makes up a small percentage of a candidate program, nor efficient if an excessive number of function pairs need to be compared. We compare the existing approaches in this table in terms of the analysis type, granularity of applied birthmark, interpretability, effectiveness for resisting amplification caused by cross compilation and efficiency. From the table, we can observe that a non-existing approach can comprehensively overcome the three limitations. To overcome the three limitations, we propose ISRD, a novel interpretation-enabled software reuse detection approach based on a multi-level birthmark model, which holds the following advantages. ISRD is capable of capturing program semantics from cause granularity to fun granularity and uniquely identifying a program with a multi-level birthmark model. To achieve high occurrence of reuse detection, we perform normalization at different levels of our birthmark model. To speed up the similarity calculation among thousands of function pairs, we propose a precise internal search based on anchor recognition. Our approach consists of two main stages. Birthmark generation states constructs the multi-level birthmarks of the target program and the candidate program. The reuse detection stage recognizes anchors and conduct intent search originated from the anchors to significantly accelerate function pair matching. In order to construct the function call graph, we first use binaries as the input. Then, with the symbol tools, we are able to get the assembled code of the binary. After that, based on the extracted colors and coins from the assembly code, we distill the program semantics into a function call graph. In this graph, each node denotes a function and each edge denotes a function call. To characterize function semantics, we propose minimum branch path that is a partial straight line execution path between branching nodes in a control flow graph. MBP can represent function semantics, its effectiveness and efficiency. In addition, it's resilient to structural variations and jump instruction variations. To return the call semantics of the instructions and be resilient to amplification introduced by cross compilation, normalization over instructions is applied. It consists of three parts K instruction extraction, instruction lifting, operand removing. After birthmark generation, 
given the target program and the candidate program, we are we can capture their similarity relationship based on their birthmarks for reuse detection. Anchor recognition tries to find matched anchor function pairs, which can efficiently instruct later reuse the function matching. We jointly use two ways to recognize the anchors among a huge number of functions in the candidate program. Wave 1 and Wave 2 performs strict instruction match and identical library call invocation check, respectively. In the intent search, we explore neighbors of the matched anchors to find new function pairs with a high similarity score under the guidance of function level bookmark. After identifying the potentially matched function pairs, we are able to measure the similarities of two functions by calculating the similarity scores based on their basic block level bookmarks and BP size. Equation 1 is showed how to compute the similarity score for a pair of MBPs. The similarity score of two MBP sides can be calculated according to the equation 2. Finally, equation 3 is introduced to measure the similarity relationship between the target program and the candidate program. For the evaluation, we first introduce the study setup and then carefully evaluate our approach by answering the three research questions. We evaluate ISRD on two ground truth datasets, including a dataset that is constructed by ourselves and a widely used benchmark dataset that is pro provided from Bingo and AlphaDiff. The nine metrics are used to measure the detection performance, the values ranging from 0 to 1, where a higher value indicates a better performance. We use the dataset 1 to answer the first question. These fingers report the performance of ISRD in terms of effectiveness and efficiency to detect partial reuse. We can observe that ISRD effectively detects partial reuse and is efficient to handle a large scale of programs. And to answer the second research question, a case study was showed to illustrate the interpretability of ISRD by providing a graphic demonstration of reuse. The case study shows that the detection results of ISRD is interpretable by describing the matched part between uh, the target program and the candidate program. To answer the third research question, we evaluated ISRD by comparing the binaries compared using different compilation configurations, and we compared the recall of ISRD and that of the baseline approaches. Experimental show the results show the resilience of ISRD across compilation, and compared with the baseline approaches, ISRD achieves better performance regarding a widely used benchmark dataset. Function inlining leads to a partial semantics problem. It's a major internal limitation to ISRD. For ISRD, it's based on checking identical library calls in the step anchor recognition. It will fail to across all eyes. Finally, due to the difficulty of collecting partial reuse samples with accurate labels, only 24 problems were selected to construct dataset 1 and 74 real partial reuses were manually labeled. We leave these limitations as our future work. In summary, we focus on the analysis of partial software reuse detection. We propose a novel fine granular multi-level birthmark model to uniquely re represent program semantics and enable interpretability of software reuse detection results. We perform normalization at both the basic block level and the instruction level to resist semantics preserving amplification for accurate software reuse detection. We design a process to recognize anchors and conduct intent search originated from the anchors, which can greatly reduce the number of comparisons, thus significantly accelerate detection speed. We implement SRD and evaluate its performance with extensive experiments. The results reveal that SRD is inter interpretable, can effectively and efficiently detect partial reuse, is also resilient to cross compilation, outperforming the state of the art approaches in terms of accuracy and efficiency. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. 
So hi everyone. Um, thank you uh, to um, <clears throat> to our presenter Xin Xu. Uh, welcome to this uh, question and answer session for the second uh, presentation. Uh, I would like to invite all of you, whoever wants to ask some questions, to our author here um, to type in your questions in the uh, in the chat so I can ask them to Xin Xu. Uh, she is from the uh, Xun University of uh, China. So uh, again, thank you for your very interesting uh, presentation. Um, meanwhile, that um, our audience uh, writes up some questions in the uh, in the chat, I would like to ask you uh, a question. So, okay. uh, in your uh, study where you evaluate the ISRD uh, approach. Um, you say that you have uh, selected a set of data sets to validate the approach. So my question is, uh, what criteria have you used to uh, select the uh, data sets? And uh, how have you, have you identified the set of metrics that you use to measure? Uh, the two data sites uh, we use, uh, the first one is where construct by ourselves and we uh, used a, a standard compilation tool to detect the reuse from the uh, two, uh, 22,000 projects downloaded from the several uh, open source platforms such as the uh, compilation of the uh, picture of, about the picture character of the software. And then we developed, developed a script tool uh, to flat, flat out those that cannot be uh, flat, uh, flat those that can be compared successfully uh, to form the data. Uh, then we select this, uh, these sort of years to form the data set one. And the data set two, we use a standard data side used by some, uh, some, some paper, and we use it directly. Okay, and also um, based on what, how did you identify the metrics to use? So once we have, you've clarified how the data sets have been selected, then you say that you um, measured some metrics. No? So how did you, um, how did you met, identify that set of metrics? Did you use an existing um, set of metrics or did you identify them specifically for your ISRD approach? Metrics, uh, the metrics used in our paper, we used the uh, standard metrics used by some other existing paper, city, existing approaches. We use like, this in our paper. Okay, thank you. So, um, Fahad has also a question for you. Um, first of all, his compliments for a great presentation. Um, he says, uh, so you mentioned that other approaches can't specify the reused part of code, and it only shows the percentage of, you, of reuse. So he asks, how can your uh, approach show the reused functions? In our paper, we define the interpretability of ISRD as the ability to provide the uh, detailed evidence to support the detection of the multi-level benchmark form. And the uh, and, uh, uh, case studies uh, case study provided by our paper, we can say we, we, only, we not only provide the, uh, the percentage of the reused part, and we uh, provide the uh, we used the part from the uh, we proposed the multi-level benchmark form, form we provided, such as the function level or the uh, basic block level and the uh, instruction level. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you for your uh, for your answer. Um, does anybody have other questions of uh, whoever is listening? So in the meantime, I will ask you another question. Um, so in the, in the set of the limitations that you illustrate in your study, so in your study, you have said that you have some limitations. And among these limitations, one of the limitations is uh, function inlining, which you have uh, mentioned. So uh, my question is, 
Um, how has this limitation impacted the results of your work? And what have you done, if you have done anything to um, control and um, uh, in some way um, limit and to cope with this limitation? The function in life because of our approach is uh, in our the reuse detection uh, stage, we use the function call graph to, uh, we use the intent recognition, uh, anchor recognition and the intent search based on the function call graph to accelerate the, this, uh, the speed of the detection. De detection. So if, the, if uh, the function in learning existed, the two, uh, two function Two, soft, two function call graph of the two software, they will be uh, uh, some different. So as, we, as I say, the uh, function in line is our work, uh, a limitation of our work. And uh, uh, about the function in line, uh, we, uh, there are another uh, work such as a uh, uh, bingo and uh, our future work is uh, is to try to solve the function in life uh, function in life pro pro problem to uh, to maybe uh, make, make our the approach is better. In this in this sense, you say it's like future work, right? Um, do you already is it something that you are already uh, working on, or is it just planned uh, as a future work? Now uh, collect uh, some um, data sites uh, to uh, about the functioning mining and uh, run the existing work such as the uh, uh, bingo or RFD uh, this uh, works to uh, on our the constructed data site and uh, and <coughs> find that they are this limitation is not out is not uh, to impact our work this this exists. This existing works. They also uh, the function in line is also their limitation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your answer. So um, uh, I have one last question for you. Um, so among uh, wh when you uh, have started your when you started your presentation. Okay, you say that your approach faces the problem of software vulnerability. So now that you have the results of your study, um, how do you find that your study has helped to address software vulnerability? Uh, because uh, in uh, our work is our, our work is used, is to propose the tool accelerate the uh, the search uh, the search part and the accelerate the, the speed, speed of the detection detection so uh, when when a new vulnerability uh, ex uh, existing so our our um, approach can help the uh, software software developer to quickly find the this vulnerability um, Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, so thank you, uh, everybody, for uh, uh, wrap it up and uh, get ready to go into the uh, next um, paper presentation. So uh, I would like to thank our presenter, Shi Shu, uh, for your uh, presentation and also for the answers to uh, the questions. Uh, thank you to everybody for having uh, listened to the uh, presentation and also the uh, the questions. And we will be back in the next uh, Q&A uh, session. So um, thank you and see you all in a few minutes. Thank you. See you again. Bye-bye.